this scholarship guys actually covers everything it not hmm. only covers your tuition fees but your hmm. living expenses accommodation yeah. travel costs so it's like you're not shelling out anything from anything. your pocket for yeah. like the next 4 years in hmm. fact i think you'll end up saving some amount saving of money also yeah. for sure right? so for which sure. is pretty great suryansh so, now if you hmm. could just tell us all about this scholarship because we yeah. do know that you did receive it right yeah Hi everyone. I am Neha Agrawal. I'm the founder of Eyes Up Communications and today we have with us Suryansh Kushwaha, an undergraduate student of computer science at NUS in Singapore. In this video, Suryansh is going to share with us the entire admissions procedure. How did he secure that 150% scholarship and finally his experience at National University of Singapore? So without further delay, let's get started. Hi Suryansh, thank you so much for joining us today. So could you please tell us something about yourself? Hi Neha, uh, thank you for inviting me here. So well, uh, I'm Suryansh Kushwaha, and currently I'm studying in the National University of Singapore, majoring in computer science and along with a minor in entrepreneurship. Yeah, so that's about it. Fantastic. So, firstly, yeah. you're studying at NUS, which is like yeah. the best university in Singapore, and that yeah. too in one of the most difficult programs to get yeah. into, and the most in-demand <laughs> programs to get into, which yeah. is computer science and engineering. So, yeah. Suryansh, tell us hmm. how did it all happen? Like, why did you decide to study in Singapore? Had you hmm. applied to other countries? Were you hmm. preparing for your exams in India? So, tell us, like, hmm. how did this entire thing play out? Okay, so for me, it's like a whole different story than every like other usual people. So, what happened with me was that I was preparing for IITs, right? And mm. well, I even took a gap year for it, a drop year to prepare for IIT. Okay. But at the same time, I like somewhere deep down, I also wanted to study abroad, but I couldn't convince my parents earlier. So uh-huh. during this drop year, I tried to convince them, and they were like, "Okay, uh, you can go abroad, but still." you need to take care of the expenses right so yeah so then i thought of applying to singapore and australia because these mm-hmm. universities offer good scholarship so mm-hmm. that's why then i chose nus ntu and also uh, uni melbourne australia and two or three more universities in australia yeah so that's all how it happened i'm just so tell us more like you were preparing for hmm. the iits right and yeah. to be able to secure a seat at nus that to be computer hmm. science i'm sure your academics must have been stellar okay so for um, my first attempt at iit i got decent scores but then i couldn't uh, like crack j advanced okay. so then i thought of like again trying for iits but then also i had really good uh, academic score in my boards so yeah so in 10th i had got 97.4 and in 12th i had got 99.25 <laughs> so yeah so that's why i thought to apply at like nus because uh, nus and ntu they look for your board scores a lot i guess in your application like that is a major highlight of your application according to me it's not that people who don't score well don't get in there are a few of my friends who got like 19 in 10th and 92 in 12th but they still got in so yes definitely they do look out for your whole application and they want to know you rather than just your scores right okay so that really helps suryansh and since yeah. we are already on the topic like there are a couple of questions that i mm-hmm. have if you could just clear for me yeah. firstly do they only look at your class 12 board scores or mm-hmm. is class 10 class 11 scores also important mm-hmm. that's my number one question okay secondly did you write the additional examinations like sat mm-hmm. act mm-hmm. toefl ielts did you appear mm-hmm. for any of these examinations and thirdly apart from your academics do you think there was something else in your application that stood out in terms of extracurriculars internships anything that you had done yeah so they do ask for class 10th and 12th board results but i feel that they are more inclined toward class class 12th because uh, a friend of mine got like 92 in 10th and 96 in 12th but he still got in 
So yeah. I guess there's more weightage for 12th rather than 10th. And yes, if you have good scores in 9th and 11th as well, then you can as well submit it to show them your consistency. So for me, since I was applying for computer science and my scores for computer science was like pretty good in all four years. So I submitted all of my uh, transcripts of the last four years. So yeah, to answer your second question, well, since I already told you that I was preparing for IIT, so okay. I only thought of applying abroad in my drop year. So yeah. I didn't sit for any of the SAT, ACT or APs or anything, right? So yeah. NUS just asks for the only mandatory thing for NUS and NTU, I guess, is just your board scores. They don't ask for anything yeah. else except for it. Everything else is optional. Yeah. And, but for uh, the state board and other boards of India, they ask for your SATs. Apart yeah. from that, if you are from ICSC, CBSC or IB, they don't ask for it. If you have SATs and your score is pretty good, like 1350 or 1400, you can submit it. And if you don't have good score, it's totally okay to not submit those scores. Yeah. And then for TOEFL as well, IELTS as well, if you have good scores, then submit yeah. it. If not, then don't. Because I feel that they use these scores as a tiebreaker when there's like two candidates who have almost the Correct. same yeah, almost the same qualifications and everything, then they will look at those. Apart from that, I don't feel that uh, they are as important as your board scores. And then, yes, you do have an option to submit your extracurriculars and personal statement. And I feel you should use this thing because if your grades aren't satisfactory enough, mm -hmm. they will definitely look at it and yeah. you still have a chance to get it. Mm -hmm. So for extracurriculars, you just have to like submit top three extracurriculars and you can like submit more diverse thing rather than mm -hmm. just one thing, right? So let's say I applied for computer science. So I submitted one of my projects, which I did for computer science major, and then two other things, which can show that what other things I know, as in like I did my school council thing. So I submitted right. my school council that I participated in that. And my third thing was, yeah, the certifications, which I got. So for, I did some courses and I just submitted those certifications as well. And then for personal statement, you just have 2000 characters, which is not, not enough. So you yeah. have, yeah. So you need to plan it well. So mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, that's about it. Yes. That's about okay. It. All right. So I think that really helps Suryansh. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, you've cleared these doubts. So yeah. thank you for that. <laughs> um, now coming on to the next question, which is, what exactly are the admission requirements? I think you hmm. still clear them, hmm. but just to be like very, uh, very, yeah. very clear. What hmm. are the admission requirements, program fees? What hmm. are the different scholarship opportunities that are available hmm. and how do you even go about those? So if you could just uh, tell okay. us that. Yeah. So, yes. So as I said before, the only mandatory thing, number one, is hmm. your board results, board. right? Hmm. And number two, if you are not from ICC or CBSC, then... ACT with writing and essay with SAT with subject scores or subject sorry subject test or APs is required. Apart from that, everything else is optional. Okay. So, uh, English proficiency is optional. Mm -hmm. Your extracurriculars mm -hmm. is optional. Your personal mm -hmm. statement is optional. But okay. if you have Good it, to then definitely submit. Yeah. Right. And then for the program fee, so there's two things. One is that if you want to take the MOE tuition grant or if you don't. So MOE tuition grant is uh, like grant, which is subsidized by the Singaporean government. Okay. So uh, if you don't opt for it, then it's about, I guess, 19 to 24 lakhs per annum. And the MOE tuition grant, if you choose to opt for MOE tuition grant, then it's more or less like 50%. So okay. if you offer that, then it's around like 11 to 17 lakh. If you choose MOE tuition grant, then you have a three year bond obligation. Yeah which is that after you are done with your course, you have to uh, work for the Singaporean government for three years post-graduation. Okay. And then regarding the scholarship part, uh, I guess for Indian students, there's only one scholarship, which is science and technology undergraduate scholarship. Okay. So it, yeah, so it covers everything from your uh, tuition fees to your uh, living expense 
your accommodation and then they do give uh, your uh, air ticket fees just for going to Singapore and then coming back from Singapore. So it's like only two tickets are paid and then they give you one-time settlement fees and also like uh, computer allow allowance. Yeah. So That's fantastic actually. Hmm. So this scholarship guys actually covers everything. It not hmm. only covers your tuition fees, but your hmm. living expenses, accommodation, yeah. travel costs. So it's like you're not shelling out anything from anything. your pocket for yeah. like the next four years. In hmm. fact, I think you'll end up saving some amount saving of money somebody, also. Yeah. For right? sure. So for which sure. is pretty great. So what like how do you so Suryansh now if you hmm. could just tell us all about this scholarship? Because we yeah. do know that you did receive it, right? Yeah. So yeah. please tell us how do you apply to this scholarship hmm. and uh, which, like, what's the criteria to be able to secure this scholarship and hmm. any bond obligation along with this? Right. So for this scholarship, there's no different application. So okay. it's just your main application which you submit, and they will themselves consider I'm it, saying. right? So, but. For this scholarship, uh, having good academics is a must. And then um, showing like uh, leadership skills and having good extracurriculars. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah, these are the four things which are required to get the scholarship. Also, yes, there's a six-year bond obligation with this scholarship, which means that you have to work for six years after you get the scholarship. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. So, like, just to give more clarity to the people. So, guys, mm -hmm. uh, after understanding from Suryansh, so basically there are two kinds of, uh, I will not call them both scholarships, but there are two kinds mm -hmm. of programs that are available through which you can get your fees reduced. Yeah. First is the service obligation scheme where mm -hmm. they reduce your fees by almost 50%, provided mm -hmm. you work in Singapore for three years after you mm -hmm. graduate. Now, this is optional. Anybody can take it. You don't have yeah. to have stellar academics or you don't have to mm. stand out from others. All you need to do is opt for it and they will give you this, right? Mm. But yeah. the scholarship that Suryan secured mm. was the undergraduate uh, science and technology yeah. uh, scholarship, scholarship, right? Which yes. only is given to a handful of people, which mm. covers everything. Your entire tuition cost, living expenses, travel cost, and at the end of the day, you end up saving some amount of money that is yeah. given to you as well. But yeah. here also, there is a bond that you have to work in Singapore for six years after you graduate. So this is the difference between the two. Yeah. And also, I would like to add on, uh, there are a few more scholarships, but these are offered by your hostels, right? So uh, the, currently the hostel which I'm staying in is a new college. So okay. this, these hostels also give you scholarship and they do also cover up to 150%. So there are different scholarships for the hostels and there are different uh, criteria for it, which uh, I'm not like totally sure about, but yes, you can go and check on the website to get in. And the, the best part about these scholarships is that there's only three year bond obligation. But they do give like a little bit less stipend than the s and scholarship. But okay. still, that's enough for you to uh, so cover yeah, your living cover expenses. Cover your everything. everything. Yeah, living expenses. Yes. Okay, that's very good. So, Suryansh, uh, I think it's been six months hmm. uh, since you've been studying at yeah. NUS. So, tell us what do you like most about studying at NUS Singapore? Uh, so, the answer to this one, I guess, is again the common answer. Is it's the diversity and uh -huh. apart from this, I would say the weather because the weather uh -huh. here is really nice. You don't have to worry about anything. Like it's not too hot, it's not too cold. Mm -hmm. In here, there's no sort of groups. You know that if you study in some, let like, let's say USA or UK, then mm. there are like sorts of Indian groups or right. like, country wise groups. But here Completely in Singapore, completely agree with you. Yeah, but here in Singapore. Like in my group, I have people from Japan, people from Korea, people from um, even UK, and then people from Singapore itself, India, Bangladesh, China. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so you do get to hang out with everyone. So that's the best yeah. thing about studying in Singapore. And uh, you can plan your academics as per your wish. 
you can do computing along with anything else you want a minor in entrepreneurship a minor in business a minor in even i guess law if that's allowed so mm. you can do any sorts of permutations and combinations you want so yeah that's the best thing about studying in singapore and in us itself so that that's amazing and now for my last and final question yeah. would you like to give any advice to people who are preparing to apply for singapore university okay yes so my advice would be just to be you because even after i am repeating myself i guess even if you don't get good grades you can still get in if you try to be you in your personal statements right so just yeah. try to be you all right so thank you so much suryansh it was really great having you and uh, thanks a lot for your time yeah thanks for having me here